chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again as always. I do hope you're well. Today we're looking at this thing, an MXR Carbon Copy Analog Delay Pedal, which has been very, very generously donated to Guitars for Good Causes by one of you guys. You know who you are. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, yes, an Analog Delay Pedal. Uh, basically what this uh, unit seeks to emulate are the kind of effects pedals that we thought we didn't want anymore way back in the 1980s. Back then digital was the buzzword wasn't it? You know digital reverb, digital chorus, digital delay etc etc. I honestly think I can recall a brand of shampoo because shampoo was a product I bought back in those days not anymore, obviously, uh, a brand of shampoo that managed to work the word digital into its marketing. And if I remember correctly, they even spelt the word digital on the bottle with that funky cutting edge seven segment display uh, kind of lettering. Yes. But anyway, um, fashions change and now analog is very much back in vogue. And a pedal like this seeks to uh, recreate the sounds that you could have got from something like this, uh, the uh, Melos Echo Chamber, which was the first ever guitar effect that I ever owned. Uh, it used to have a little tape cartridge that plugged into the back. And uh, I guess the first thing we should really do is get down to hearing what kind of sounds that a unit like this can create. I'm also going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here and show you how to recreate one of my favourite uh, delay effects, the uh, the very famous dotted quaver uh, kind of sound that you'll hear a lot in the playing of people like Albert Lee and uh, what's he called from U2, The Edge. So here's uh, what that sounds like. Let's take that Burt Whedon guitar boogie shuffle type riff and uh, it's played at two notes per beat so that's one and two and three and four and but the overall count here is in semi quavers which are one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. What we're going to do is dial in a single repeat echo, the same volume as the original note and this needs to come back three quarters of a beat later which in musical terms is what's called a dotted quaver or sometimes called a dotted eighth note but I'm old fashioned so I say quaver rather than eighth note. This means that that original A note is going to come back on the A ah of one E and A ah. and then all of the other notes in the riff are going to come back the same amount of time after they're actually played which gives something that sounds much more intricate and busy much like this. <laughs> Or you can go for riffs in the style of David Evans. Oh, okay, let's call him The Edge. Or you can get beautiful cascading waterfall style effects, much like this. And here is a simple calculation so that you can uh, get that dotted quaver sound yourself. Basically how to figure out what the delay time is you need to set. Okay, all you got to do is once you know the tempo in beats per minute of the tune that you're playing, and that is kind of essential, is divide 45 by that number. 
and this gives you the number of seconds that you need to set your delay time to so for example if you're at 120 beats per minute 45 divided by 120 is 0.375 so set your delay time to 0.375 seconds or 375 milliseconds to put it another way and if you don't have a delay pedal which allows you to dial in the delay to the nearest millisecond then you're going to have to do it the old school way like I used to have to do with my old Melos echo chamber which is to uh, basically start playing the riff that uh, you want to apply the, the effect to at the tempo that you're going to be playing it at and then just tweak the, uh, the controls on the pedal until everything sounds in tempo. And then basically your drummer is going to have to meticulously keep in time with the rhythm that you're creating. And in the words of Winston Wolfe, lots of luck, gentlemen. Anyway, what's next? Yes, I think it's about time we had a look at uh, what the controls on this pedal do. Now, to a lot of people, I guess this is sort of self-explanatory, really, because, um, you know, you look at the controls and they seem obvious, but... I get people in these uh, guitar lessons that I do all the time who are utterly perplexed by even the simplest uh, of effects pedals because they've never used effects pedals before. So if you're an effects newbie, here's some information that you might find useful. Okay, starting with this control, this governs how loud the echo is. If you crank it all the way around to the right, then the echo of the note that you play will be the same volume as the note that you play. This control here governs how many repeats you get from any note that you play. The further round to the right that you crank it, the more repeats you will get of that note. Crank it all the way to the left and you will just get a single repeat of the note that you play. On some delay units this control is referred to as feedback, which can be a bit confusing. But what it basically means is how many times the output of the echo circuit is fed back into the input of the echo circuit. This control here, delay, governs how long the time is between playing a note and the echo of that note occurring. The further round to the right that you crank it, the longer that time is, basically. And finally, we have the mod button here. This is um, a feature of this unit. It doesn't really occur on many delay units. What it basically does is simulates the imperfections, the wow and flutter associated with tape echo all the little warbles and stuff something that uh, we thought we'd got rid of when we all switched to digital delay back in the 80s and uh, now it seems we're getting a little bit nostalgic and we're wanting all of those imperfections back in our sound you'll hear a demonstration of what kind of effect this has very shortly and now let's have a listen to what kind of effect that uh, mod button has on the sound And there you go. I should also just mention, going back to that dotted quaver thing here, that uh, the delay time um, control here, when you set that to 12 o'clock, uh, that is uh, giving you the perfect delay time for dotted quavers at 120 beats per minute, which is a very commonplace tempo. And that kind of thing shows that you know a little bit of thought has gone into this pedal anyway that's uh, what that does but that mod button it really does add that sort of uh, spacey uh, wow and flutter and tape imperfections as i remember it from my old melos uh, unit uh, quite convincingly is it a sound i would use myself probably not i think if i was going to have uh, wanting that effect i'd want some sort of uh, control over it so I'll probably have a chorus pedal uh, dialing in that kind of uh, waviness to the sound 
but you know it is a handy little feature on this and if you don't like it you can always turn it off now then uh, basically this pedal is going to be up for sale as of tomorrow which is uh, monday the 18th of february 2019 i'm going to put this one up on ebay and uh, as soon as it's up i'll uh, Put the link to the listing in the display in the description box below this and i'll pin it at the top uh, if you're interested in bidding on it um, basically uh, the proceeds from the sale of this will be going to uh, zoe's place baby hospice which as i'm sure you know by now is a charity in middlesbrough which provides palliative respite and end of life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. A fantastically worthy cause, which I'm incredibly proud to support. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you fancy a cool little pedal, then get yourself a bid in on this. Uh, looking on, on eBay at the moment for these, uh, in used good condition, used like this, they seem to be going for about a hundred quid, as you can see here. So I'm going to start this off with a starting price of 60 quid and let's just see how much money we can raise for Zoe's place as a result of the auction. And speaking of effects pedals, there's another one that um, I'm getting rid of. This one here um, is Zoom G1ON pedal. Lots of cool features in this. It does amp modeling. Uh, it does uh, delay, although the digital uh, version of it all of the usual suspects basically chorus reverb all that kind of thing uh, it's also got a looper pedal in it um, and it makes some really really nice sounds and once again this was donated to the cause uh, by a viewer to this channel so thank you for that you know who you are and if you want to own this pedal then all you need to do is enter the competition that we've got running at the moment basically uh, a few weeks ago i did a, a video on modes and as part of that video there are there's a jam track that you can download and uh, you know just record yourself playing a solo using the information in that video you're going to learn something that you put that you may not uh, already know hopefully it'll demystify um what might be uh, what you think is quite a complex subject and you'll learn how to use um some some modality in your playing and if you record yourself playing the solo send it to the email address that you can see on screen and as soon as this channel tips over 9,000 subscribers and we're heading there rather quickly I will um, pick a winner uh, what I'll do then is I will make a donation to Zoe's place in return for this pedal so it's then effectively mine to give away and I'll send it to the person who I judge has recorded the best solo don't worry if you're not a, a fearsome shredder uh, that's not, not what I'm uh, looking for really although if you are a fearsome shredder feel free to enter anyway because it's not going to count against you what I'm looking for is the most musical sounding solo uh, using uh, modal kind of ideas which as I say are described in that video um, so yeah give it a go you got nothing to lose and speaking of having nothing to lose if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition then get in touch with me via the details at the end of the video uh, if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson in this very room, in fact. Or wherever you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose, as I said, and potentially everything to gain. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And why not give the video a like as well while you're at it. And I shall look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks.